So I have a question. Can we run water through an off chiller? Does that have consequences? For testing purposes, we are planning to run a pump for one chiller in off condition. Uh, please help me with this question. So he's talking about wanting to balance a uh, evaporator or the, 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 DP, the DP, do some uh, uh, flow balancing on the evaporator of a um, centrifugal, I think. It doesn't really matter if it's centrifugal or not. He's got a hydronic evaporator he wants to balance. And is he able to uh, flow water with it off? Now, in some deeper conversations, found out that he was, um, he also had uh, three other chillers. The other three chillers will be online and he, he needs to just get the fourth one balanced, but he's not sure as to what to do because he, he can't shut the other three down in the process. So the way I go about this, if you're, uh, if you're needing to do a flow balancing, it's important to just keep your time minimized. So if you're not careful, you need to keep the, the time that the water is flowing, the, the processed water. So he's got water that's gonna be moving through this machine that is essentially at temperature. Now it, it's gonna be return water temperature. It's not gonna be a supply temp. So it's probably gonna be in the low to mid fifties, I'm assuming if they've got enough to run three chillers then they've probably got a, a, a moderate load on the loop. So with that, um, it's still cold enough that there's a risk of oil migration. And that's what you have to be careful with. We don't want the oil to migrate by letting the chill water flow through the barrel for too long. And this is true for any oil-based system. Now, obviously, if you had a mag bearing, there's no oil to really worry about. Um, now, on a, like a real specific level, you could make the argument that, well, what you have to be careful with is the, the more flowing time you have the more wear and tear happens on a uh, tube bundle the reality is like that's not that's not the main issue here the main issue is if that water that chilled water processed water is allowed to flow for an extended period of time then you have a risk it's not a guarantee it depends on the system each one's a little different but you have a pretty good risk of that oil trying to migrate into your evaporator specifically which depending on your machine could have a very negative effect on you trying to get past startup. In some cases when I've had this, and I've had this happen even with just a trickle flow. So I've had some chillers that um, the isolation valve on the chill water side, when it would close, it didn't close all the way like it was supposed to. The automated valve that the control system would, would open and close at, at startup or shutdown when it had a start stop call. And so, what was happening is on that specific example there was just a slight trickle of flow through that evaporator it wasn't much but it was just enough that the evaporator was able to cool down in temperature from the return water and it would migrate all the oil out of the reservoir um, within a few hours time and we'd all we'd get this slow f or no oil flow alarm every time or no I'm sorry low oil level alarm, that's what it was. Uh, every time we went to try to do a startup, when it had been off for a while, and, and but the rest of the plant had stayed online. And that's what we ended up figuring out was, uh, it was that valve. That valve wasn't sealing properly and because it was allowing a little bit of a trickle on the flow. So my point here is, this is what we have to be careful with in your scenario. Now, to be honest, as long as you have enough pump to keep your GPM up, so you're probably gonna be fine. Uh, having it flow for less than an hour, especially if you're just trying to get flow established, verify your DP and your GPM, once you know those things are, are intact and you're happy with the readings, then you're good. Just You can just shut everything back off. It's not gonna cause you any issues. You can do that. Be mind or be aware of uh, two things. One, we have to make sure that the pumps are able to sustain that, that fourth chiller in your uh, specific example. Um, that fourth ch the, the fourth chiller will take away some of the GPM depending on the, the setup of the loop. So assuming this is like a headered system, if this is a primary secondary, then this uh, kind of a mute point. So with a primary, you're gonna have a dedicated pump anyway. But let's say if it was a headered system, then if it's a headered, uh, we have to make sure that our pumps 
can maintain DP on the loop so that we maintain GPM through the other three chillers and that all four chillers get full GPM access to them because if you tried to bring or open manually that fourth chiller without bringing an additional pump online to support it in our loop DP drops, which also means that our deep our flow through the other three chillers is going to drop and that fourth chiller just becomes a bypass at that point on the loop. But that's going to influence your accuracy on getting your balance between the four chillers at that point when in, in reality, we, the pumps weren't moving enough water. So that's one of the things I just want to make sure you're very, very careful of is that you're actually able to deliver enough water for the four chillers. Most plants, in my experience, are, are that's not going to be an issue. You typically have enough pump and hopefully you have some redundancy in your pumps where you don't even need all of them with all your chillers online. That'd be great, but not always, you know, just covering the bases here. That's, but I hit on my second point there. The second point is this chiller now becomes a bypass and you may see some temporarily, temporary fluctuations in your leaving water loop uh, because that chiller is bypassing. There's just not doing any process cooling to the water at that point and it's just allowing that return water to flow back and go straight into uh, the, the leaving side of the, the loop for your facility. So that's just something to be mindful of. And, and if you've got a critical facility where it's very sensitive to its water temperatures, I've had some data centers especially that they couldn't very, uh, fluctuate more than a couple of degrees. Otherwise, we'd start to lose the, the, the uh, control of the data center, right? So unless you've got a situation like that, it's probably not going to be an issue. But if you do, you're just going to have to be aware that you need to work doing this procedure around uh, when you've got more flexibility in your loop control and, and that uh, temperature having a little bit of variance to it. Anyway, doing a fun Q&A thing. I'm traveling for some stuff and I'm here at the airport. Still waiting on the flight, so I figured I'd do this uh, QA. Been something I've been thinking about for a little while now. But either way, this is the exact kind of stuff that uh, we're, we're going over and we're talking about in Chiller Academy. Uh, I'd really like you to go over there and check that out. That's chilleracademy.com. Now, this question actually came from the, the exclusive community group inside of the academy. So uh, pulling straight out of there, and this is a conversation that we had inside of that group to help him through a specific scenario. And I'd love to be able to help you in the same way if you need that help. So if so, go check it out. Otherwise, MTT, make the time for your family, for your spouse, for your kids. We'll see you around.